Tonight, wild weather, the freak storm that ripped apart homes in Geelong, sending debris flying through the air and terrified residents scrambling to protect themselves. Let Us Open, struggling businesses plead with the Andrews government to decide when they can welcome customers again. Australian doctors and nurses testing a controversial drug to shield them against coronavirus. Yes, it's the same one President Trump's been taking. Deadly fault, a court hears how a truckie's brakes had failed when he crashed and killed an off-duty police officer. And we're on track for another level crossing removal blitz, but it also means some serious headaches for commuters. This is 10 News First Melbourne with Jennifer Cutt. Good evening. First, Geelong residents have told how they scrambled for cover as a terrifying freak storm ripped apart their homes. Homeowners say they heard an almighty roar before the tornado-like storm tore through their neighbourhood, leaving everything in its path in ruins. From every angle, there was chaos and destruction. Rows of homes devastated by a violent freak storm. It's like a war zone, yeah. Garage doors were crumpled, trampolines were sent flying. Thunder, lightning and really loud bangs and it was pretty scary actually. And tiles turned to missiles. One pierced the windshield of a car and landed on the front seat. Like a tornado has gone through, uh, just this loud noise. I was actually frightened. I thought I was going to get under the table. That's how loud it was. Severe winds blew the roof off Simon Atkins' garage. It landed on his pergola, ripping part of that down too. I heard this almighty roar and um, it really did sound like a jet engine flying over the house. A handful of properties were destroyed in minutes. Dozens more were damaged. So we've had about four houses which we've confirmed are completely uninhabitable. One resident was injured when a window shattered on top of her. The mother of one was home alone when the severe weather hit. And it was just like a, I don't know, a steam train or something coming through. Hell of a noise and a bang. And then we heard the tree fall against the house. The storm rolled in around midnight. It was fast but fierce. Two streets in Warren Ponds copped the brunt of it. Homes in Mount Dunedin were also hit hard. Weather experts are now assessing the damage to determine exactly what type of weather event caused the destruction. With severe storms, you can get tornadoes. You can also get what, what are known as downbursts or microbursts. For residents and emergency crews, it's now a race against time to cover roofs and replace broken tiles before the next band of rain sweeps through tonight. It's been a long night, so no sleep, but, yeah, just really assessing the damage today. Jade Kotick for 10 News First. Jade joins us live now from the epicentre of the freak storm. Jade, it's hard to believe the storm's ferocity and the trail of destruction it's left behind. Well, Jen, it's easy to see why residents thought it was a tornado that swept through the streets. The damage was almost in a linear direction. And as we go to air tonight, a major clean-up operation is underway before the rain hits within the next two hours. The house behind me here, that was the hardest hit. It was also where that woman was injured. The roof to their garage was torn off. It ended up in their backyard and left the garage exposed. I've also been told they're still missing the very heavy hardtop cover to their outdoor spa. Fortunately, they had home insurance and do have a common accommodation for the night and that includes the woman, her husband and their small child that lives in that property. As for other residents, they're now going door to door looking for their belongings, including their back fences and their clothes line clotheslines, as I mentioned. The race is on to get in and have these roofs uh, repaired, the ceilings sealed before the rain hits before 7pm. Fortunately, it won't be anywhere near as much rain as they saw in the early hours of this morning. Jen? Oh, that's good to hear. Thank you very much, Jade. Desperate gym and beauty salon operators are pleading with the Andrews government to give them some certainty around when they can reopen. It comes as Victoria continues to record low numbers of coronavirus, with only eight new cases overnight, none related to aged care facilities. Life is far from beautiful for beauty salons. Sought-after therapist Victoria Jade is trying to keep her staff busy preparing for reopening. She just wants to know when that will be. The whole beauty industry is crying out for a date or a timeline. Clients too are begging for certainty. Some have even asked for a sneaky appointment. 
we've obviously had the black market questions as well, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, we con we're contacted daily and it's just so frustrating that we can't answer with a date. Owners of gyms are also calling for the limbo to end for the sake of people's mental health. This really is a community. Um, I think in the old days people used to go to church. Well, they, a lot of people aren't going to church anymore. They go to the gym and that is that is their community. Bernadette Sharney says gyms can be opened safely. And by limiting per session how many people can come in. So um, other areas, other industries that are allowed to open perhaps can't control the social distancing as well as we will be able to do here. Overnight in Victoria, eight new COVID-19 cases were recorded. One was linked to the Cedar Meads cluster, which now stands at 103. There were no new cases in nursing homes. Of four suspected yesterday, only one now has a positive case, Camberwell's Linden Aged Care. Hammond Care in Caulfield has tested an 84-year-old for the third time after she returned one positive and then one negative test. And two residents from My Care in Kilsey Scythe returned negative tests today. The health department confirmed it started tracing using the COVID Safe app on Monday. We downloaded the data from the app and that uh, revealed one close contact um, who hadn't been identified in the initial in the initial interviewing process. Victorian officials say the app will become more important as restrictions are eased. Emma O'Sullivan for 10 News First. And Emma O'Sullivan joins us now. Emma, one of the eight new cases has links to a school. Jen, a construction site here within the grounds of St Leonard's College in Brighton has temporarily closed after a worker who was here tested positive for COVID-19. The construction company ADCO issued a statement explaining that person was a subcontractor who was in contact with two other subcontractors on the site and who was showing no symptoms at the time of their test. The school has also provided more information explaining this person was tested on May the 12th. They only got their results back yesterday after Afternoon. So the principal has written to parents of children who attended the junior school for supervision early in the term explaining that none of the builders came into contact with any of the children and also the Department of Health has advised that there's no risk to staff or students here. OK, thank you very much, Emma. The diplomatic dogfight between Australia and China has escalated. In the latest insults to be traded, Beijing says we are like a pet dog for US President Donald Trump. The Morrison government insists there is no trade war. To speculate outside that is dangerous. But at the very least, there's now an ugly war of words, with Chinese state media lashing Australia as a giant kangaroo that serves as a dog of the United States. We focus on uh, Bendigo, not Beijing uh, or Boston. Uh, our decisions are made in the interests of Australian citizens. Beijing is calling for the Commonwealth to give up its political manoeuvre. Claiming the global COVID review agreed upon yesterday was actually a slap in the face to Australia and will be completely different to what PM Scott Morrison was seeking. Clearly there are uh, trade tensions between the countries. It's, uh, uh, no point pretending that that's not the case. Our government will first locally appeal the 80% tariff slapped on barley imports, which many consider retaliation for the probe. Personally, I think we're too reliant on China. I think it would be wise to have a lot of different markets lined up. OK, if we take a slightly lower price, so be it. Other industries such as dairy, wine and tourism are growing increasingly concerned. There's always going to be tensions and always going to be disruptions. What we want the government to do is to try and minimise those. But from barley to... <coughs> Australia's raw wool industry is also heavily reliant on China. Certainly a lack of competition in the, in the raw wool market at the moment and the various Chinese... Uh, processes are competing amongst themselves. But it doesn't consider the relationship vulnerable. See so certainly no risks in the in the foreseeable future to that um, to that continuing. Trade Minister Simon Birmingham says he won't be drawn into cheap politicking after China's ambassador to Australia labelled the government's push for an inquiry a joke. But for Aussie farmers, the situation is anything but funny. Tegan George for 10 News First.
An anti-malaria drug made famous by Donald Trump will be at the centre of a coronavirus trial involving more than 2,000 Australian healthcare workers. The US president insists it can ward off the symptoms of COVID-19. The trial is designed to test his theory. Hydroxychloroquine saved soldiers who contracted malaria in World War II. 75 years later, it could be a frontline weapon in the world's war on COVID-19. So we feel that in the absence of a vaccine, until we get to that uh, stage, that this could be a useful um, extra level of um, protection. It's not a vaccine or a cure, but it may be a preventative. Australia's leading the world's largest trial to find out. More than 2,000 healthcare workers are taking part. I'd love for it to work, but equally it's very important to show that it doesn't work if it truly doesn't work. Donald Trump's copped criticism after revealing he's been taking the drug for two weeks. It's had a great reputation, and if it was somebody else other than me, people would say, gee, isn't that smart? In Australia, you can't get it without a prescription. The government has put in very stringent restrictions around the use of this drug. If no healthcare worker is infected with COVID-19 over the next four months, it will be difficult to determine whether that's because of our effective safety protocols or the trial drug is working. But... That's an excellent problem to have. And it's why 50% of participants will be given a placebo. In that sort of a trial, it's very clear that you can detect a difference between uh, that, that is due to the drug and nothing else. It comes as more than 100 Australians volunteer for the nation's first vaccine trial. But we're being told to be patient. A COVID cure is almost certainly at least 12 months away. Natasha Rex will be for 10 News First. The family of an off-duty policewoman killed when a truck ploughed into the motorbike she was riding has come face to face with the man behind the wheel. The court heard the truckie knew his brakes weren't working but decided to drive anyway. Patrick DeLeo cried in court as he remembered his daughter, Diane, an off-duty police officer mowed down and killed while on her way to work. I lost the most beautiful girl, but oh, well, what can I do? In 2017, First Constable DeLeo was on her motorcycle in Juan Turner when a truck ran a red light and ploughed into her. Saman Deep Singh was behind the wheel. The court heard the offender attempted to apply the exhaust, foot and emergency brakes and sounded his horn repeatedly. He was unable to stop and collided with DeLeo. The prosecution argued Singh knew his brakes were faulty and his truck overloaded, but drove anyway. He initially denied responsibility, telling police, how can I be at fault if my brakes failed? For years, DeLeo's mother fought tirelessly for justice, but she never got to see it delivered. She died after a long battle with cancer, but not before writing a victim impact statement. That was read out in court today. She was comfortable as a gay woman. She loved the police force. All she wanted to do was help people. Singh is now facing up to 10 years jail for dangerous driving causing death. I don't hate the bloke. Or like, like. The 30-year-old was living in Australia on a bridging visa. He'll be sentenced next week and faces deportation when released. Christina Castalis for 10 News First. Well, now here's Stephen, and are we headed for a night grand final? Ah, uh, well, Janet looks that way, but most coaches could not care less, saying they'll play anywhere, anytime. Also, a troubled dock is set to make a surprise return. And the Premier League back in training, but soccer's big boys still have their problems. Thanks, Stephen. Coming up in 10 News First, a winter construction blitz on track for parts of the rail network. And take a bow, sir. Captain Thomas Moore's mammoth fundraising efforts to be honoured. It's one of the biggest food trends to hit the globe. This box is a little bit different. And what our MasterChef contestants do will take it to a whole new level. That's your best yet. It is bloody delicious. 7.30 tonight on 10. And the greatest dish ever seen in the MasterChef kitchen. Oh my God. Wow. Is coming. Let's do it, baby. It's on, mate. 
Make this week one to remember. Run second, third or even fourth and get money back in bonus up to $50 on selected races every day. Points bet. Because you can't get out to see someone, Booper members can claim some extra services via telehealth, like psychology, speech pathology, dietetics and more. Booper, because life happens. Learn more at booper.com.au. No matter how you care for them, take comfort that Huggies Ultra Dry Nappy Pants stretchy fit and instant absorption keeps your baby's skin dry and comfortable. Huggies, be comfortable in your skin. Together, we're getting there. And driving away has never felt better, especially with the incredible drive-away price of 49888 for the UX200 Luxury. Contact your Lexus dealer today. This is a Nature Valley checklist. Whole grain oats? Yes. Artificial colours and flavours? No. Delicious ingredients? Yes. Preservatives? No. Big taste? Yes. Nature Valley. Get more out. We're powered by a leader in renewable energy, the mighty Snowy Hydro. Now that's real Aussie energy. Red Energy, 100% Australian electricity and gas. Tab is giving you the green light with access to venue mode Wednesday and Saturday. Unlock unique markets and more promotions across the day's racing and sport. Check it out on the app. Tab, long may we play. Gamble responsibly. Different is making rather than buying and saving rather than discarding. Embrace different and find the glad in it. I appeal to the woman who has my son. Please give him back. Someone might have been watching your house right there. What? She probably admires you in her own strange way. What have you done? Who have you hurt? You hurt. Aggie? Hi. You came? I didn't know if we should bring him. I felt insensitive. No, it's OK. The secret she keeps tonight after MasterChef. Welcome back. Thousands of public transport commuters in Melbourne's north are being told to prepare for months of disruption as a railworks blitz gets underway. And there's bad news for drivers too, with some major roadblocks ahead. Upheaval on the Upfield line. Four level crossings at Munro, Raynard, Bell Streets and Moreland Road will be removed, causing commuter chaos for some, but others welcome the progress. God, the work's got to get done, doesn't it? Yep. From July 28 until November 15, buses will replace trains between Anstey and Upfield stations. In the first and last weeks of the Blitz, the entire line will shut. It'll be annoying. Um, we do have trams, which is good. The Upfield train line is one of the narrowest rail corridors across Melbourne, with homes and businesses right alongside. It's why these works will require one of the longest shutdowns for any of the 50 level crossing removals pledged during this term of government. We are not able to do the pre-assembly work that we would normally do. Similar disruptions will take place at Mentone and Cheltenham from this weekend. It's just really unfortunate that it's coinciding with a time when we are we are really vulnerable as, uh, as travellers. A large amount of this work was already plugged in. There has been other examples where we have brought forward some work. Drivers are also not immune. On June the 3rd, the left-hand turning lane from St Kilda Road Road into Flinders Street will close for up to two years due to Metro Tunnel Works. We need to be looking at compensation for the businesses that will have their livelihoods potentially ruined. Simon Love for 10 News First. A man allegedly attempting to evade police has left a trail of destruction in the CBD. Patrol units attempted to stop a stolen Mazda station wagon being driven erratically just after 8.30 last night in Craigieburn. When the driver failed to stop, officers pursued the car into the city. It collided with several cars, including a police vehicle, at the corner of Flinders and King Streets just after 9.30. Three people have been charged with multiple offences, including theft, reckless driving and drug possession. Well, let's take a look at the traffic with Jess Miller in the chopper.
Thanks so much, Jen. Out in Woolert in the Lexus of Brighton traffic chopper. This is Epping Road. We can see emergency services and a tow truck on site. Following an incident from earlier today, there have been a fair few collisions out on the roads. This one, a vehicle hit a pole and brought down power lines. Epping Road is completely closed off between Craigieburn Road and Bridgin Road. That's for both directions and it will be closed for quite some time. Your best alternative in the meantime is probably to use the Hume Freeway. Back soon with more traffic. Jen. Thank you, Jess. Disturbing new data has revealed the nation's roads are becoming more dangerous and it's truckies who are paying the highest price. 53 truck drivers and passengers were killed last year and in many cases other road users were to blame. A rig rollover in Brisbane's east leaves a big mess and an even bigger clean-up. Thankfully, the driver wasn't badly hurt, but not all are so lucky. In 2019, we saw a 60% increase in the number of truck occupants, truck drivers and their passengers who lost their lives in, in truck crashes. 53 people were killed, an increase for the first time in 20 years, according to new data from National Transport Insurance. This report is, uh, is very sobering reading. Our truckies deserve a safe work environment. They don't deserve uh, to be injured and to be killed. The statistics reveal where things are going so horribly wrong. The most common cause of fatal crashes is fatigue, followed by driver distraction and speed. But in accidents where other vehicles are involved, often it isn't truckies who are to blame. Instead, it's car drivers who are overwhelmingly at fault. They need space behind them, space around them, be aware of their blind spots. Secondly, Put your mobile phone in the glove box. Driving is the most dangerous thing you're going to do each week. Uh, it deserves your full attention. With travel restrictions easing, the fear now is we could see more serious crashes on our roads as traffic picks up again. Expect to see more police and more speed cameras catching out reckless drivers, putting others at risk. We want you to get home safe. We want our drivers to get home safe. John Paul Gonzo for 10 News First. And ahead in 10 News First, the US achieves a virus world first as bickering among politicians escalates and the extraordinary reunion between parents and their son more than three decades in the making. And the first of two fronts crossed Melbourne overnight. We'll check where the rain fell and where the rain will fall shortly. Together, we're getting there. And driving away has never felt better, especially with the incredible drive away price of 49888 for the UX200 Luxury. Contact your Lexus dealer today. It's one of the biggest food trends to hit the globe. This box is a little bit different. And what our MasterChef contestants do will take it to a whole new level. That's your best yet. It is bloody delicious. MasterChef's Mystery Box on 10. It continues 7.30 tonight. Hi, guys. Notice anything? Oh, look at these greys. For a second, I thought, OK, greys, I'm ready to see you. But I'm not. I am not ready for this much grey. Excellence Creme by L'Oreal Paris. I don't think there's ever gonna be a better before and after. Three steps for 100% gray coverage and rich radiant color. Oh my God, I'm so happy. <laughs> Boom, is what I'm talking about. Self-care is self-worth because now more than ever, we're all worth it. Outside, it's something to look at, but inside, it's a space to be. A space we fit our lives into. A space that brings us closer, that spans generations. Where we go to let go. In a Mazda, this space is 100 years in the making and summed up in two words. Zoom, zoom. Let's do it, baby. Zoom, mate. Make this Saturday one to remember. Get best tote on all exotics on every race across all Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane and Adelaide races. Points bet. When we say no to walls, it doesn't matter how you arrived. The doors of the world are kicked wide open so we can all thrive side by side. Join the bigger picture with HSBC's low rate home loan. At 
Devondale, we believe great milk comes from cows that graze free. The BHP Vital Resources Fund is providing financial support to regional health services to help them deliver the essential services their communities need to meet the coronavirus challenge. For more information, visit bhp.com slash vital resources. Introducing BP Rewards. Earn BP points to spend in store. BP Rewards. Or get dollars off fuel. BP Rewards. Or choose to earn Qantas points. Totally BP Rewards. Start earning today. Your rewards, your way. A ticket in the MS Dream Home Lottery is more than a chance to win one of two $1.5 million grand prizes. Every ticket sold helps us support thousands of Victorians living with multiple sclerosis. People like Lydia. Through MS Limited, I access NDIS support. That just gave me the freedom to not worry about it. It was, it was great. You too can make a difference. Get your tickets today. I appeal to the woman who has my son. Please give him back. Someone might have been watching your house from up there. What have you done? Who have you hurt? Aggie? You came. The secret she keeps on 10. Continues tonight after MasterChef. You're watching 10 News First. President Trump has declared America's high number of coronavirus cases a badge of honour, and he's taken aim at his critics, describing a top Democrat as sick and his predecessor as the worst leader in history. America first, first in the world to pass 1.5 million coronavirus infections. I view it as a badge of honour. Really, it's a badge of honour. It's a great tribute to the testing. Donald Trump is also proudly taking hydroxychloroquine, rejecting a study that found it increased the death rate in veterans. There was a false study done where they gave it to very sick people, extremely sick people, people that were ready to die. Speaker Nancy Pelosi led today's chorus of criticism. Especially in his age group and in his, shall we say, weight group, what is morbidly obese. Pelosi is a sick woman. She's got a lot of problems, a lot of mental problems. She's not Trump's only punching bag. He's ditching a long-standing tradition to unveil Barack Obama's portrait, refusing to invite his predecessor back to the White House. I think President Obama was one of the worst presidents in the history of our country. Doing what feels good, what's convenient, what's easy, that's how little kids think. There was bickering in the Senate too. The Treasury Secretary warned of permanent economic damage if the lockdown is extended. How many workers will die if we send people back to work without the protections they need, Mr. Secretary? Mr. Senator, we don't intend to send anybody back to work without the protections. That's what happened at this New Jersey gym. The owner arrested for opening up against state orders. I'm more free to my kids aren't going to have rights. By tomorrow, all 50 states will have begun loosening restrictions two months after Americans were ordered into lockdown. Yet only two of them have met federal guidelines to reopen. Eamon Ashton Atkinson for 10 News First, New York. The UK has passed another grim coronavirus milestone with the death toll there passing 35,000. Almost 250,000 infections have also been discovered thanks to a dramatic increase in testing. The testing regime has allowed the country to start to open local travel, especially at this time when many farms are desperate for workers. Every year, large numbers of people come from countries such as Romania, and Bulgaria to take part in the harvest. This year, we will need to rely on British workers to lend a hand to help bring that harvest home. That's good news for some of the more than 2 million Britons who have filed for unemployment since the lockdown began. Millions of people have been evacuated and millions more have taken shelter as super cyclone Amphan bears down on the eastern coasts of India and Bangladesh. Amphan is currently churning in the Bay of Bengal and is expected to make landfall near Kolkata later tonight. It will be one of the largest storms to hit the region in a decade with wind gusts of up to 200 kilometres an hour. 
A man who was abducted as a toddler more than 30 years ago has been reunited with his biological parents. Mao Yin was raised by strangers after being snatched as he walked home from preschool with his father in 1988. Police never gave up and finally found him in April thanks to a tip-off. As a toddler, he was bought by a family for just over $1,000. And the gratitude for Captain Tom Moore's fundraising efforts just keeps coming, with the British government announcing he will be knighted. Also an honorary colonel, he will be known as Captain Sir Thomas Moore for his truly staggering effort of raising more than $61 million by just walking around his garden. Johnson & Johnson will stop selling their talc-based baby powder in the United States and Canada. The company is facing 16,000 lawsuits in the U.S., from customers claiming their products, including the powder, cause their cancer. But Johnson & Johnson says it's taking the product off the shelves due to poor sales and misleading litigation advertising. Well, now here's Mike, and the weather's certainly been a bit wild and woolly. Yeah, thank you, Jen, and a very good evening. Well, the rain overnight cleared to a fairly fine day today, 10 degrees the minimum, 16 degrees this afternoon with the northerly. But let's have a look where the rain did fall around Melbourne overnight. The best rains around town, 26 millimetres up in Springvale. Coldstream, 22 millimetres of rain was welcomed, 18 at Viewbank. In the city, 16 millimetres of the rain as thunder and lightning awoke most of us. Speaking of which, our midweek weather fact... Thunder is the sound caused by lightning and because light travels faster than sound we see lightning before we hear thunder. The closer you are the shorter the gap between the lightning and the thunder. And we have another front on the way later tonight. Again, 10, maybe 15 millimetres of rain. But with this second front, icy air. So tomorrow, only around 12 or 13 degrees hail and up in the Alps, snow. More shortly, Jen. Thank you, Mike. And still to come, we'll update you on what's been happening in the world of finance and how self-funded retirees have taken a big financial hit during the pandemic. It's one of the biggest food trends to hit the globe. This box is a little bit different. And what our MasterChef contestants do will take it to a whole new level. That's your best yet. It is bloody delicious. 7.30 tonight on 10. And the greatest dish ever seen in the MasterChef kitchen. Oh my God. Wow. Is coming. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit tired of craving something that I can't have. Make this week one to remember. Run second, third, or even fourth and get money back in bonus up to $50 on selected races every day. Points bet. Design, performance, exceptional value. A Mazda stands out. At the Mazda Standout End of Financial Year event, get a Mazda CX-3 Neo Sport from 23990 Drive Away. Search Mazda Offers now. So, so. Get winter ready, switch to Energy Australia and get a $50 electricity credit and a $50 gas credit. Plus, with Total Plan, get a total energy bill discount guaranteed. Join Energy Australia today. Even remotely, our home loan specialists can zoom into your home to help you save on your next loan. Harvey Norman, your destination for the Samsung Galaxy range. Save $150 on the Samsung Galaxy S20 128 gigs, now $1,199. The Galaxy S20 is also available in 5G. Save $150. Or get the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus 128 gigs for $1,349. Save $150. Plus save $50 on this Samsung Galaxy Watch, now $498. Limited time, now at Harvey Norman. Catch the Supercar Stars taking on the world's best drivers and tracks in the BP Supercars All-Star Z Series. Qualifying from 6pm, racing from 7. Live every Wednesday where you get your motorsport fix.
To help you get the most from the post during these difficult times, we've set up 15 temporary facilities to help deliver the 2 million parcels we're currently processing every day. For more, visit Auspost online and thank you for your patience. Prepare for your great escape with Jayco. Dealerships are open and ready for your next adventure. With great deals across the entire range, there's an RV for every budget and every adventure. Need finance? We can help with that too. Get ready to escape and visit your local Jayco dealer today. Controversy here in the forgotten grocery bag lifting. Russia disqualified. Unexpected item in the bagging area. He tried to put that avo through as a brown onion and got busted. Introducing Jumpstart by Light and Easy, the simple program that will help fast track your weight loss success and improve your health. Within those first couple of weeks, I noticed a difference within myself. I found results straight away, and for me, Light and Easy has been life changing. Jumpstart combines the proven weight loss results of intermittent eating with Light and Easy's delicious, nutritious meal plans. Whether your goal is to jumpstart your weight loss or to simply eat well and improve your health, visit lightandeasy.com.au today. Hello there. Panic buying or a lack of it last month has delivered a brutal blow to the shops. Retail spending has collapsed. Sales in April fell almost 18%. The Bureau of Statistics says it's the strongest fall it's ever published. Such a contrast to March, where spending recorded its strongest ever rise. So for retailers, the easing of restrictions can't come soon enough. And it's harder to find work. More than 18,000 job advertisements disappeared in April. That's a drop of more than 16% and is the largest monthly decline since the government started this type of analysis 14 years ago, meaning it's worse than the GFC. They're down almost 50% over the year. So of the 94,000 advertised jobs, where are the most opportunities? In health and information and communication positions. Now, we know the airports have been quiet because of COVID-19 restrictions, but figures from Sydney Airport show just how quiet. Just 92,000 passengers passed through last month. That's down 97 and a half percent. In April last year, passenger traffic was 3.6 million people. To the share market, it's finished in positive territory for the fourth straight day. Mire up after confirming it's reopening more stores. And having a quick look at the dollar, it's buying 65.5 US cents. And that's finance. Gillian Bowen with that finance report. Well, state premiers are now brawling over when they should reopen their borders. The nation's top medical experts are also involved, saying there's absolutely no reason for them to stay closed. It's been the encouraging theme of the crisis. We'll get through this together, Australia. We will get through this together. We're all in this together. But it turns out we're not. At least not when it comes to opening Australia back up. That rationale for restricting travel on the basis of not wanting to spread it, it particularly to uh, rural areas, uh, no longer applies. Whilst that's up to the states themselves to decide, it's looking pretty thin from the medical point of view. It's absolutely critical that uh, we uh, get the economy going. New South Wales is open for travel on June 1. Sydney will also be a major tourist attraction for people from all around Australia. We've got no restrictions. Victoria seems to be following New South Wales' lead, but more slowly. Queensland's borders are staying closed as late as September. I will always put Queenslanders first. We love you, but you can come a bit later. Today, South Australia confirmed its border restrictions. We've fought so hard to get ourselves to this position. We're not going to cede it by opening up our state borders uh, too early. It remains hard to get in and out of WA and Tasmania. And the Northern Territory Chief Minister, he says he may not even open the borders until there's a vaccine. All of which inhibits Scott Morrison's hopes of ramping the economy back up. So the question is, can the Prime Minister intervene? Especially given the medical experts say there's no reason to keep borders closed. Well, he can't because in our federation, it's just not the PM's call. That is a matter for uh, the states. I personally, of course, uh, don't want to see any restrictions in place for one day more than is necessary. We might all be in this together, but the states are doing things for themselves. Peter Van Onselen for 10 News First.
the nation's self-funded retirees received some bad news today. The economy and their investments are now so badly affected they'd probably be better off on a pension. Even worse, they say they're being ignored by Canberra. They've scrimped and saved their whole lives to retire comfortably until now. We've got this very bizarre situation in Australia at the moment. In fact, almost a perverse situation. In fact, the COVID-19 economy is so bad, self-funded retirees are worse off than pensioners. And the pension is 24,500. With the stimulus packages, you're going to get another 750 in March and 750 in July. So you're getting almost 27,000 uh, on the pension with the stimulus packages. But if you are a self-funded retiree with a million dollars in the bank, you'll get $11,000 in bank interest. And that's causing concern about the mental health of older Australians who now have no safety net. Not only are they stressed because of the health concerns, and especially the over 65s and 70s going outside and potentially catching the uh, virus, but uh, also from a, uh, from a financial point of view, it's this same group of older Australians who helped the Liberals win last year's election, collectively voting against Bill Shorten's franking credits. And as the federal government extends a helping hand to some, they're the ones being left out in the middle of this crisis. Well, this exposes the great weakness in the Australian retirement income system. Stella Todorovic for 10 News First. Well, let's take another look at our roads. It's back up to Jess Miller in the traffic chopper. Thanks, Jen. We've flown over to Campbellfield in the Lexus of Brighton traffic chopper. We had word of a collision involving a car and a motorbike on Barry Road, just near Sydney Road. That was closing off eastbound lanes. Having a look now, we can see all lanes have reopened and police are leaving a scene. We've just spotted police a little further along, though. This is near Colbert Road, looks like. They're also leaving and also just had word of a breakdown on the Westgate Bridge. That's affecting outbound traffic with the left-hand lane out of action and speeds down to 40. Over to you, Jen. Thank you, Jess. Well, now here's Stephen with Wednesday Sport and some big names set to make their AFL return. They are Jen, fingers crossed, a troubled docker and a former giant skipper are both on track for round two. Also, survival of the fittest, the coach says, leave the interchange alone. Another body blow for a star magpie and the motion coach that's helping get some familiar footy faces back into the group. Together, we're getting there. And driving away has never felt better, especially with the incredible drive away price of 49888 for the UX200 Luxury. Contact your Lexus dealer today. Pete's prepped a life in lockdown that's jam packed full of ISO laughs. I appeal to the woman who has my son. Please give him back. Someone might have been watching your house from up there. What have you done? Who have you hurt? Aggie, you came. The secrets she keeps tonight after MasterChef. Hi, Chris. As one of our Care Super members, let's go see your super at work. Hold on. I'll show you some of the opportunities and possibilities that are being explored for you. Your super should work as hard as you do. So we're making sure it does. Whether you're turning portraits into paintings, and floors into art rooms. We're here for all those messy little moments. You don't give in. You don't give up. You push on when most would have pushed off. You lend a hand, whether a hand was asked for or not. It's called Aussie Spirit for good reason. Because it takes spirit to get through times like these. Lucky you've got it in spades. It's what inspires us to be by your side to help. Together we'll get through this. We always do. Search Toyota here to help. Let's do it, baby. Strong, mate. Make this Saturday one to remember. Get best tote on all exotics on every race across all Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane and Adelaide races. Points bed. Can't wait to get back to the footy. Oh, so good. Oh, there's been a spill. He picks up the crumbs, goes left, goes right. He's done a back in the bathroom. Hot food, just $3 at 7-Eleven. 
Every 14 minutes, someone finds love on eHarmony. Now with more matches, a new compatibility quiz with deeper insights and enhanced messaging, the new eHarmony experience is better than ever. Start something real with someone right. As part of Victoria's big build, we're removing level crossings. Buses will replace trains on the Frankston Line from the 24th of May to the 26th of July. Find out if you're affected at bigbuild.vic.gov.au. Authorised by Victorian Government, Melbourne. Save up to 15% on your first year's premium when you get a new Allianz Comprehensive Car Insurance Policy online. Hey, good to go. Uh... Thanks. Get that Allianz uh... feeling. Search for a quote today. While we're all having nights in, make yours a big night in. Because this year you could win up to $8,000 worth of prizes from a huge range. Woolworths Big Night In. There's a new winner every day. <laughs> they can clear our nose and soothe our throat, <laughs> but they will never relieve our cough. No, Willie. Vitz vapor drops. Willie, I'm in the middle of something Willie. here. Vitz vapor drops plus cough can relieve our cough now. Move along. Aye. Nothing to see here. Oh. Vitz vapor drops plus cough. One of the world's biggest food trends. That's your best yet. It is delicious. Goes to a whole new level tonight on 10. Good evening. After years of debate, the AFL looks set to flick the switch on a night grand final. Collingwood President Eddie Maguire has stopped just short of declaring the game under lights immoral this year. Playing the grand final under lights has been kicked around for years. Now one of the league's heaviest hitters is saying... Lock it in for Cox Plate night. I think we'll have a night grand final this year. I think we'll have the uh, the Manicato Stakes at uh, Mooney Valley on the Friday night. I think we'll have the holiday on the Friday. And then we'll have Saturday will be the Cox Plate and Saturday night will be the grand final. Fantastic. The coaches say as long as there's a cup to play for, they couldn't care less. I don't care when it's played as long as we're there, mate. <laughs> I don't really care care to be honest um, as long as I'd love us to be in it. <laughs> Just a few days into the COVID-19 era things are starting to look a bit different. The Saints coach hinting round two selection could hold more weight than ever. It might be like the Australian cricket team when they were flying and um, you know when you get in it's hard to get out. Now unlike some clubs the Saints aren't worried about having their blue chip performers on the same park at the same time. Names like Billings, Jones and Hanabry going through their paces all together early this morning. No, don't look into that, please. <laughs> the players are doing that. We don't need everybody else. No. Um, we just thought the, the connection stuff for players that played uh, with each other and to keep that connection going is really important. Colourful kangaroo Jasper Pittard has joined in the hair games with this bottle blonde offering. But the most important Roo news of the day was the improvement of the captain's wounded knee. I think he's in a better position than he was going into round one. He, he had an interrupted pre-season. Um, he's had the chance to rehab his knee um, and been running for a good four or five weeks now. And while some more senior coaches have called for interchange numbers to be boosted to help keep the stars on the field, Shaw says he likes footy when it's survival of the fittest. Yeah, well, I'm a bit of a traditionalist in that regard, but so I, I think um, I'm pretty happy with where it sits right now. Nick Butler for 10 News First. Adam Trelaw continues to be plagued by soft tissue injuries, with Collingwood revealing today the star magpie strained his calf on the first day back at training. Trelaw missed the Pies' opening match of the season because of a hamstring injury. He now appears to be in serious doubt for round two, with the on-baller on restricted training for the next fortnight. Brownlow medalist Tom Mitchell believes it'll be some time before he's back to his prolific best. The two-month delay has helped the Hawks ball winner further recover from his broken leg, but it has meant he has played just one game in 18 months. Tom Mitchell has learnt to be patient. He's had to be, and he's not in any hurry now. Probably the last couple of months have given me a little bit more time to condition it and uh, build my strength in that leg. So, yeah, I, I don't expect to be at my best straight away. I've got confidence that I'll get back to my best, um, you know, hopefully soon, but it might take, obviously, a few games. Even after an extra two months, the Brownlow medalist is still rebuilding his body. That pre-season training session remains with him. It always will. 
But it's the lessons learnt in his year out that have helped him deal with the delay and uncertainty of the last few months. In terms of life lessons, um, it, was a, it was a really good learning curve for me and you know, it made me realise that footy's not everything, there's so much more to life and I sort of carry that persona around with me or I try to. And so go out and have fun and um, obviously get the best out of yourself but um, trying to find the enjoyment in the game more than anything. Mindfulness and motion appear to be the buzzwords for Mitchell. He's been working with specialist conditioning coach Mark McGrath, whose techniques have also helped bomber Dylan Shield. I find it's a really good recovery strategy. It makes me bounce well out of sessions and feeling fresh for the next sessions. It's a lot of mobility sort of stuff. He's played just one game since the 2018 Brownlow medal, so you'd expect him to be at the front of the queue for footy's return, but the coach has got him covered. Once we got the all clear that we're allowed to play, he had some dumbbells and he was doing bicep curls on the other end of the Zoom, like as if he was preparing to play and he needed to get his fitness better. So, yeah, he's loving being back more than anyone. Katie Price for 10 News First. One of the beneficiaries of the long delay to the season are the Dockers, with forgotten star forward Jesse Hogan on the comeback trail. He's back training after a mental health break and his coach says a return is not too far away. He's had a troubled year but seems to be on the improve. Jesse Hogan has returned to training. His coach is even talking about a potential round two return. Yeah, he's a, he's a possibility. Uh, he rejoined the group this week, um, albeit in a smaller group. Now it's about... Um, integrating him, him into the club and uh, making sure his physical preparation's right. The Giants are also hoping for a round two bonus with Callan Ward and their thinking on the comeback trail from a knee reconstruction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's, um, he's 13 months now, uh, for 13 and a half months, and he was ready to go probably about round three to be played. And best and fairest winner Tim Taranto will also be back, but in two months. He'll probably, no, he's probably about eight to nine weeks away. So um, clearly there's going to be a benefit for the stop-start season for a number of clubs with players that had injuries. And Tim will have that benefit. Port Adelaide says Robbie Gray has escaped serious injury after a gym mishap that has the club scratching its head. How do you drop a weight on, on your toe, you know, like, to be honest? Anyway, he's a professional, um, but he'll be fine for round one. Thomas revealed he's reconsidered stepping away from the CEO's role and will at least see out the season. It's, it's just a stress on the board and on the club that we don't really need to be thinking about at the moment. So I just reassured him that um, the leadership was solid and, and uh, focused and invested. The Eagles still need more information before all players and staff will commit to the Gold Coast hub. I think, I think the issues for us on the the duration will be whatever it is you've got to add a couple of weeks on top because when you come back you're in quarantine and that that um, that adds to the anxiety so um, we'll work through it. Rob Orders for 10 News First. Disinfectant may replace spit on the ball when cricket returns. The game's governing body in Australia says sanitising the cherry is one thing they're looking at to keep players safe when matches return. Uh, the ball being leather um, is harder to disinfect because it's got little you know, looks and crevices, but uh, so we don't know how effective it's going to be. Uh, we don't know how infected the ball is going to get and we don't know if it's going to be allowed, but it, it is a, absolutely a consideration. Cricket Australia doesn't think fielding in the slips or close to the bat will be impacted by social distancing measures put in place for matches. Premier League players have reported back for work that 20 clubs have been given permission to train in groups of five for a maximum of 75 minutes. And there's no one more excited to be back than current competition leaders, Liverpool. I was over the moon, I would say. Like, I couldn't wait for, for, for a while now. I'm really happy that we, that we are able to do this um, again. Going back to my word, having small group training, stuff like this, will be intense for the coaches, especially because we have a lot of players in small groups, means a lot of sessions. But that's, uh, we had enough time to rest, so that will be, we will be fine. He's a bit short on books. In the lead-up to training, 748 players and staff were tested for COVID-19 with six people from three clubs testing positive. Forget dealing with fur balls. This kitty's got bigger things on its plate as it showed off its cat-like reflexes. The little kitty's calisthenics has had almost 4 million views and counting. <laughs> so for that perfect performance, 
the friendly feline saves his way to our play of the day. And that is pretty darn good, Jen. That one, no wonder it's had four mil views. I love it. That's sensational. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Coming up, Mike's back with the weather. And don't put those umbrellas away just yet. There's rain and even snow on the way. It's one of the biggest food trends to hit the globe. This box is a little bit different. And what our MasterChef contestants do will take it to a whole new level. That's your best yet. It is bloody delicious. 7.30 tonight on 10. At Coles, you can rely on us for your corn chips and for fixing your chipped bumpers. With Coles Comprehensive Car Insurance, you get quality repairs you can trust. Search Coles Car Insurance today. Not now. Do it, baby. It's on, mate. Make this week one to remember. Run second, third, or even fourth and get money back in bonus up to $50 on selected races every day. Points bet. Here's to the quitters. He's a quitter. So is she. And her. That's right. They, along with thousands of other Australians, have quit smoking thanks to the help of Nicorette Quick Mist. It starts to relieve cravings from 30 seconds, making you two and a half times more likely to quit. Let's do something amazing. Get Nicorette Quick Mist for a great price at Chemist Warehouse. At Domino's, we pride ourselves on handcrafted pizzas, but after leaving our 265-degree ovens, the only hands that touch them are yours. And right now, get 50% off any large pizza delivered with zero-contact delivery from Domino's. Introducing BP Rewards. Earn BP points to spend in store. BP Rewards. Or get dollars off fuel. BP Rewards. Or choose to earn Qantas points. Totally BP Rewards. Start earning today. Your rewards, your way. Every tub of haagen ice cream starts with four simple ingredients with a selection of the finest flavours, creating a decadent, velvety ice cream. haagen -Dazs. Take home extraordinary tonight. From home time to sleepy time, IKEA designs around life's precious moments. So make mess, mohawks, and laugh until your belly hurts. Because with IKEA, there really is no place like home. Amy has always helped Australians get back on the road, but now more than ever, it's vital those on the front line get to where they need to be. That's why we're now offering free roadside assist to all doctors, nurses, hospital staff and first responders Australia-wide until the end of the year. Amy and non-Amy customers, here's to supporting the everyday heroes who are supporting the rest of us. To take advantage of this offer, go to amy.com.au. Lucky you're with Amy. Controversy here in the Forgotten Grocery Bag Lifting. Russia disqualified. Unexpected item in the bagging area. He tried to put that avo through as a brown onion and got busted. What will the New World Order look like after the pandemic? Next. Pokey poison, one woman's humiliating spiral into desperate addiction. She lost her job, her savings, everything. Why being sent to prison in her mid-60s changed her life. Plus, Scotty is throwing a dinner party with her funniest friends and you're invited tomorrow on Studio 10. Welcome back. Now it's over to Mike for what seems to be a cold and wet outlook. Yeah, that's right, Jen, and a very good evening. It's rather chilly outside right now. We had a front move through uh, Victoria last night, another one tonight, reaching Melbourne around midnight, maybe 15 millimetres of rain. But this front's got much colder air in it, so tomorrow's going to be much colder than it was today. OK, some great photos that have been sent to Mike's Picks at network10.com.au. And this is fabulous. Forget about modern technology. Grab some old typewriters, sit them on an old suitcase, put on a record about cars, and get Wednesday, the Boston Terrier in Franks and South, dressed and working on this Wednesday. And here's Milo, homeschooling in Hillside, reading in bed. What on earth is he reading? 
Thank you, Lisa. So 10 degrees was the overnight low in Melbourne. 16 degrees our maximum. 16 millimetres of rain falling in the city overnight. Today, nothing. 12 degrees outside right now, and it feels like it. That humidity uh, about the halfway mark. The wind northerly blowing at some 25 kilometres per hour, but originating from the HC southwest. Around Melbourne today at Mount Dandenong, a temperature range of 7 to 11, 14 to 16 degrees elsewhere. Across our state, well, as we know, it's been described as a mini tornado. Warn Pond near Geelong copped the brunt of a freak thunderstorm around midnight. To the rain, the best falls overnight. 40 mils in the Alps today, up to just five in the southwest. Well, so far, uh, the wind shaking the windows as you tried sleeping. Got up to 135 k's in the Alps. A gust close to 100 kilometres per hour hitting Ballarat. Uh, 21 degrees today's max at Malakuta. Around the country, good news after a great drench in the past couple of months. The Darling River has now reached the Murray for the first time in two years. Up in Sydney, 25 degrees today. Further north in uh, Brisbane, 23. Over in Adelaide, just 15 degrees. A massive hailstorm hit there late yesterday. And in Canberra, where a comedian entered 10 puns in a pun contest, hoping one would win. But no pun in 10 did. 5 to 15 degrees. The weather charts, another front is on the way tonight. 5 to 25 millimetres of rain, mostly in the southwest. 5 to 15 for central Victoria. And behind the front tonight, much colder air tomorrow. The rainfall chart, a lot of moisture is being fed down from northern western Australia, feeding into these fronts. The first last night, the second tonight, followed by much colder air and showers, in fact, the, four, the following four days. In Brisbane tomorrow, 5 mils of rain, around 23 degrees. Sydney, 19, 20 millimetres of rain tomorrow, but 60 on Friday. In the national capital, 12 degrees, 13 in Hobart. Across our state, showers increasing as they move in from the west tonight. Small hail is possible in the southwest this evening. The rain band crossing Victoria tonight. Tomorrow, scattered showers in central and eastern Victoria. Hail tomorrow morning is likely in the west. Snow showers above 1,100 metres. The radar and tonight's rain band is uh, looking and like reaching Melbourne close to midnight, but this time without the thunderstorm cells and the gusty winds. Tomorrow, a strong wind warning for the Gippsland coast. Around Melbourne, rain overnight and then tomorrow, and it will be colder than today. Oh, Mount Dandenong put another log on the fire, just 3 to 7. And on the bay, south so westerly winds at 15 knots, waves about a metre. And now for Melbourne, with city chaos, big changes in the traffic, entering Flinders Street. Uh, rain tonight. Uh, showers around from 8 o'clock, the rain uh, closer to midnight, 5 to 15 mils overnight. And then tomorrow, morning rain ahead of the icy Thursday, 8 to 13. Whoa. Friday, 8 to 14, partly cloudy. Showers later in the day, and winds will be light. And then a cool and showery weekend. Saturday, 9 to 15 degrees with up to 5 millimetres of rain forecast. Southerly winds picking up pace. Sunday, 10 to 15 with morning showers. And then next week, Monday, 15, Tuesday, 17, and then Wednesday, 16 degrees as the showers return. So, yes, sir, indeed, it may be autumn, but it feels very, very winter-like. Tomorrow, grab your coats, grab your gloves, grab your scarves, 8 to 13 degrees. The developing stories we're following tonight. Wild weather rips apart homes in Geelong. We'll cross live for the latest on the clean-up. Less than 10 new coronavirus cases in Victoria leaves businesses pleading to reopen. And the pill promoted by Donald Trump being put to the test here as a way to ward off coronavirus. Well, Geelong residents have described hearing an almighty roar before a tornado-like storm ripped through their homes. Many scrambled for cover as the strong winds sent debris flying. Jade Kotick joins us live now. Jade, just how extensive is the damage? Jen, good evening to you. Well, four homes have been deemed uninhabitable, including the house behind me here. More than 100 others were damaged, including 30 properties on one street alone here at Bourne Ponds. The wind was so destructive, it was so violent that it tore apart roofs, ripped down garage doors and shattered glass panels. Within minutes, wheelie bins and roof tiles became projectiles. One bin ended up on top of the house. Trampolines were airborne. We found at least half a dozen shredded in a nature strip between the the houses and caught on neighbours fences wrapped around poles one neighbour told me she thought her house had been struck by lightning but most believed it was a tornado that ripped through the suburb, ripped through their streets purely because of just how loud and violent the storm was but also because of how direct the path of destruction was when they came out to inspect the storm fortunately only one person was injured, a mother of one who was home alone last night, she woke up only to have a glass window shatter on top of her, she spent the night in hospital 
hospital but returned home today and I've also been told that a family's pet dog was also seriously injured last night. It has been taken to the vet but it's certainly not looking good. What all neighbours did agree on is that this freak weather event was terrifying. Thunder, lightning and really loud bangs and it was pretty scary actually. Suddenly it was just this like a tornado has gone through uh, just this loud noise I was actually frightened I thought I was going to get under the table that's how loud it was I just heard this almighty roar and um, it really did sound like a jet engine flying over the house with severe storms you can get tornadoes you can also get what what are known as downbursts or microbursts Jen, tonight emergency crews and tradesmen remain on site. They're trying to repair these damaged roofs before rain falls across warm ponds in the next couple of hours. Fortunately, it won't be anywhere near what residents saw last night, but the race is certainly on to have everything sealed and covered before that rain falls. OK, thank you very much, Jade. Desperate gym and beauty salon operators are pleading with the Andrews government to give them certainty around when they can reopen. Emma O'Sullivan joins us live now. Emma, they say they can open safely. Jen, some beauty salon owners are getting frustrated. They say their industry is very hygienic because it always has had to be and that they can further reduce risk when they reopen by spacing out appointments. They're also getting frustrated at seeing hairdressers trading when they're not allowed to open. So beauty salons and gyms are some of the businesses really urging the state government to give them a timeline, to give them some certainty about when they can reopen because they're really eager to pass on that information to clients and members. We spoke to Bernadette Sharney today. She's a co-owner of Recreation Gyms. She said a lot of gyms are really close-knit communities, so looking after the safety of her members, she says, is going to be paramount when she is finally allowed to reopen. By limiting per session how many people can come in. So um, other areas, other industries that are allowed to open, perhaps can't control the social distancing as well as we will be able to do here. Victoria recorded eight new COVID-19 cases overnight. One of those was linked to the cluster at Cedar Meats. In good news, there are no new cases linked to aged care facilities. Linden Aged Care is a facility in Camberwell, so one resident has tested positive there. They're not at the facility, though. They're being looked after in hospital. At Hammond Care in Caulfield, they're waiting for clarity around a situation with an 84-year-old resident after she tested positive and then negative. They should have that test result tomorrow. Here in Brighton at St Leonard's College, a construction site within the grounds has been closed temporarily after a worker here who was a subcontractor tested positive. The principal of St Leonard's has emailed parents of children who attended the junior school for supervision to explain that none of the builders on the site came into contact with the school community. So no students or teachers are considered to be at risk. OK, thank you very much, Emma. The family of an off-duty policewoman killed when a truck ploughed into the motorbike she was riding has come face to face with the man behind the wheel. Saman Deep Singh ran a red light and killed First Constable Diane De Leo in Monturna in 2017. The court heard Singh knew his brakes weren't working but decided to drive anyway. De Leo's father fought back tears as he read out his victim impact statement. The most beautiful girl, but what can I do? I don't, I don't hate the bug. The 30-year-old truck driver was here on a bridging visa and faces deportation after serving a jail term. He'll be sentenced next week. Well, an anti-malarial drug made famous by Donald Trump will be at the centre of a coronavirus trial involving more than 2,000 Australian healthcare workers. Natasha Exelby spoke with one of the experts leading the study. As if our healthcare professionals aren't already doing enough for us now, more than 2,000 Australian health workers are about to participate in a trial with a drug that may be the key to fighting COVID-19. To talk more about this, I am joined by Professor Ian Wicks from a socially responsible distance of 1.5 metres. Professor, tell me about this drug and how it may work. So hydroxychloroquine is a drug well known to us in clinical medicine, particularly in rheumatology. I'm a rheumatologist and use it 
very frequently for my patients with lupus and rheumatoid arthritis amongst other conditions. Unexpectedly, it turns out to also have activity against the coronavirus. This was demonstrated in the test tube. So we feel that in the absence of a vaccine, until we get to that uh, stage, that this could be a useful um, extra level of um, protection uh, for frontline healthcare workers. How will the trial work? So the trial will be a multi-centre trial um, enrolling over 2,000 participants around Australia. This trial is to look at the ability to prevent uh, COVID infection in frontline healthcare workers. Professor, your time is precious and we thank you for it. This trial commences from today and it will be carried out over the next four months. Parts of the Upfield train line in Melbourne's north will be shut for four months so that four level crossings can be removed in a project described as the most complex in the city's history. From July 28 until to November 15, buses will replace trains between Anstey and Upfield stations. It's just really unfortunate that it's coinciding with a time when we are, we are really vulnerable as, uh, as travellers. A large amount of this work was already plugged in. There has been other examples where we have brought forward some work. For drivers, the left-hand turning lane from St Kilda Road into Flinders Street will close from June 3 for up to two years. Well, now let's see what's coming up on tonight's edition of The Project. Tonight we look into the use of hydroxychloroquine for preventing COVID-19. Is it a wonder drug or dangerous? Would you want to self-isolate on an empty cruise ship? We speak to the Aussie who says it's not all smooth sailing. And airlines are working out how to get us flying again safely for domestic travel. The safest thing you can do is hold your breath for the whole flight. Watch this. <gasps> Still an hour and a half to go, mate. We've got ages, yeah. mate. We've got... See you at 6.30. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Well, let's take another look at the traffic. It's back up to Jess Miller in the chopper. Thanks, Jen. West of the city now in the Lexus of Brighton traffic chopper. Thought we'd check out that broken down truck on the bridge. Good news, he's moved along, so no major incidents around the Melbourne city area. But unfortunately, we have just had word of a serious incident in the Geelong area. A car's gone into a building that's in North Geelong on Separation Street, just near Thompson Road. Emergency services are on site. Certainly not what that area needs tonight. Jen? Thank you, Jess. US President Donald Trump has made an unusual boast, declaring America passing 1.5 million COVID-19 cases is a badge of honour for him and his response. Trump has repeatedly claimed the only reason the number is so high is because the US is doing so much testing. He also hit out at both House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who described him as obese, and at his predecessor, Barack Obama. I think President Obama was one of the worst presidents in the history of our country. President Trump has refused to follow tradition and unveil his predecessor's presidential portrait. The UK has passed another grim coronavirus milestone, with the death toll there passing 35,000. Almost 250,000 infections have also been discovered thanks to a dramatic increase in testing. The testing regime is allowing the country to start to open local travel, especially at this time when many farms are desperate for workers. Every year, large numbers of people come from countries such as Romania and Bulgaria to take part in the harvest. This year, we will need to rely on British workers to lend a hand to help bring that harvest home. Well, that's good news for some of the more than 2 million Britons who have filed for unemployment since the lockdown began. Stephen's back now and a Hawks star says there's no way the season should be devalued. That's right, Jen. Brownlow medalist Tom Mitchell says the high achievers in 2020 should be rewarded as usual. A power star's nasty and somewhat embarrassing injury. Brett Ratton with selection headaches even before the season restarts. And channelling Billy Idol, the quirky kangaroo who's gone bottle block. Together, we're getting there. And driving away has never felt better, especially with the incredible drive away price of 49888 for the UX200 Luxury. Contact your Lexus dealer today.
Will you feel safe enough to board planes when domestic travel takes off again? Plus our chat with the latest chef to hang up their master chef apron. We're powered by a leader in renewable energy, the mighty Snowy Hydro. Now that's real Aussie energy. Red Energy, 100% Australian electricity and gas. There's a glass and a half in everyone. Get massive May savings at Chemist Warehouse. Our huge money savers catalogue is out now. All big brand cosmetics are half price. All L'Oreal and Maybelline, half price. All Rimmel and Sally Hansen, half price. And all Revlon and Nude by Nature, half price. That's right, all big brand cosmetics are half price. For the biggest range at the lowest prices, shop at Chemist Warehouse and stop paying too much. It's mayhem! Click Frenzy is on right now! Massive savings, the biggest brands, only for two days. Grab a bargain and let's regrow. Clickfrenzy.com.au Sale ends midnight Thursday. At Coles, we're helping lower the cost of your dinner with some of the key ingredients for delicious beef and thyme burgers. Like Coles brioche buns, four pack, just $2.70 every day. And Coles frozen chips, one kilo pack, down down to $1.90. With Coles beef and thyme burgers on mix, match and save, any of these two packs for just $12. For more great recipes and weekly specials, sign up for the digital catalogue at coles.com.au. Coles, good things, great value. New U-Foods Large Range. Introducing 14 new large meals that are big on protein and big on taste. A size that satisfies. New Large Meals, now available at ufoods.com. All of them is... Yeah, oh! <laughs> this is, this is this. You'll make a great dad one day. You think so? I know so. Elevate has more folic acid and iron than any other pregnancy multivitamin. Love grows with Elevate. Go on. At Devondale, we believe great milk comes from cows that graze free. I appeal to the woman who has my son. Please give him back. Someone might have been watching your house from up there. What? She probably admires you in her own strange way. What have you done? Who have you hurt? You hurt. Aggie? Hi. You came. I didn't know if we should bring him. I felt insensitive. No, it's OK. To Master Chef. Kangaroos coach Rhys Shaw says he couldn't care less what time the grand final is played. Magpies president Eddie Maguire thinks it's a lock to be played under lights, but day or night doesn't matter at Arden Street. I don't care when it's played as long as we're there, mate. <laughs> Shaw has a stronger opinion on keeping the interchange numbers at four. He says footy is at its best when there's a degree of survival of the fittest. At the Saints, coach Brett Ratton believes round two selection could hold more weight than ever before. It might be like the Australian cricket team when they were flying. It's, um, you know, when you get in, it's hard to get out. Ratton also believes the game will have a simpler feel and look when it restarts. Brownlow medalist Tom Mitchell has dismissed talk the award should be shelved this year and he feels the same about the flag. It can't hurt to reward someone who's had a, a good season and same for awarding a premiership. I think every team would still like to strive towards something. So um, I'm not hugely opinionated, but I think 
more importantly, that there still should be a premiership winner. Mitchell says while the two-month delay to the season has helped him build more condition in his broken leg, it'll be some time until he's back to his best. South Australian police have put the Crows and the power on notice. The clubs have been granted an exemption to stay in Adelaide and train fully. But if they step out of line, there will be trouble. With a sparkling coronavirus record, some South Australians have voiced their displeasure at the power and Crows being granted training exemptions. I'm very confident that the clubs will be ensuring that their key personnel will be abiding by those protocols so that they don't run the risk of um, having that exemption revoked as a result of non-compliance. Now on par with the rest of the league, the SA clubs will tow a much tighter line than the general public. Players and staff can only leave the house for work, food and emergencies. The exemption, later than the clubs would have liked, but pleasing nonetheless. A lot of it was about just reassuring the government that we understood the responsibility of this and, uh, you know, and that we were prepared to do whatever it took um, to get this right. A round two showdown is now favoured, despite the chance crowds could be allowed back later in the season. I'm not thinking that far ahead. What I'm thinking about is what can we bank now? I like the idea of uh, getting a showdown away uh, early in the year so that means we can stay in Adelaide a little longer. Four-time All-Australian Robbie Gray has had a minor hiccup, breaking a toe yesterday. Robbie Gray, who's not a great guy in the gym, um, he's... Uh, <laughs> He's, he's apparently dropped a weight on his foot. It's not that bad. It's sore, um, but he'll be right for round one. But how do you drop a weight on, on your toe, you know, like, to be honest? Training continued in small groups today. Stephen Motlop, one who's clearly been working hard in isolation, looking lean and impressing during the running. Max Burford for 10 News First. Former Storm and Rabbitohs superstar Greg Inglis is coming out of retirement. The Origin great has signed a one-year deal with English Super League side Warrington for 2021. Souths deny they have manipulated the salary cap, claiming he was forced to retire because he was burnt out, not due to injury. He wasn't a medical retirement. Uh, it wasn't a result of injury that he retired. I think he just lost his appetite for the game. Uh, he's been able to get away from the game, I suppose, refresh his body, refresh his mind as well. I think he's been through that process of um, getting really good treatment for any mental health issues. Even though he'll be 34 by the time he plays for Warrington, former teammates say there's no way Inglis would come back if he didn't think he could perform at a high level. Police have raided properties in the city and Sydney's east over an NRL betting scandal surrounding last year's Dally M Coach of the Year award won by the Storm's Craig Bellamy. Betting agencies raised concerns when money was placed late on Bellamy, supposedly after the winner had been determined in secret. It's understood those behind the alleged sting won around $20,000. There is no suggestion Bellamy has any involvement. The Supercars E-Series heads to the iconic speedways of Charlotte and Daytona for tonight's action. Here's caller Andrew Jones with his preview. Round 7 of the BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series tonight. The North American jaunt continues. We're going to head to Charlotte Motor Speedway, where the driving group are going to spend a fair portion of tonight turning left. 35 laps at Charlotte with no damage on. Imagine the carnage that's going to be caused. We'll then head to Daytona Motor Speedway and we'll go to the Rolex Daytona 24-hour course. Combination of an infield track with the banked high-speed turns. It's going to be pretty epic. Lando Norris, McLaren Formula One star, joins us for a third week running. He's loving the Supercars E-Series. He had a win last week. So tune in on 10 Play tonight from 7pm. And that's all from me, Jen. Thank you, Stephen. Mike will be back after the break with a wet and chilly seven-day forecast. It's one of the biggest food trends to hit the globe. This box is a little bit different. And what our MasterChef contestants do will take it to a whole new level. That's your best yet. It is bloody delicious. 7.30 tonight on 10. And the greatest dish ever seen in the MasterChef kitchen oh my God. Wow. is coming. 
Beat the cold at Harvey Norman with the best in heating and air treatment solutions. Stay warm this winter with our range of ceramic, radiant and fan heaters, convection, column and panel heaters, the latest in gas and electric flame effect models, heated throws and electric blankets, plus a huge range of reverse cycle air conditioners. Treat the air quality in your home with everything from air purifiers to humidifiers. Harvey Norman has all the big brands at great prices. Visit us in store or online. Harvey Norman, your heating and air treatment specialist. Go! It's mayhem! Click Frenzy is on right now! Massive savings, the biggest brands, only for two days. Grab a bargain and let's regrow. Clickfrenzy.com that are you. Sale ends midnight Thursday. It was a Skype call back home. Nani just came out with it. Where is your beautiful hair gone? <laughs> Thanks, Nani. <laughs> Reached your turning point? The doctors at Ashley and Martin could help regrow your hair. <coughs> With over 25 million instant scratch its wins last year, yeah! it can happen anywhere, anytime. Play today. So many things can change in 12 weeks. One of the least to change, the vibrancy of your hair colour. Tresemme Colour Shine Plex. Sulfate free. Keeps colour more vibrant for up to 12 weeks. Hair defined by Tresemme. The rest is defined by you. With Light and Easy, you can still enjoy a huge variety of delicious, healthy meals in the comfort and safety of your home, thanks to their chefs and dietitians and their contactless delivery service. In fact, Light and Easy has recently been rated Australia's number one healthy meal delivery service, scoring five stars for customer satisfaction, as well as taste, variety and freshness, all things you'll find on their autumn menu. Enjoy delicious, healthy meals with Light and Easy's contactless, award-winning delivery. Order today. If you've been injured at work, on the road or in a public place, your normal life can suddenly stop. Check if you have a claim for compensation online in minutes so you can start again. With Slater and Gordon, tomorrow starts today. HelloFresh. Choose delicious meals delivered to your door with pre-portioned fresh ingredients and step-by-step -step recipes. Now you can focus on what's really important, spending time together. Order your box today and share delicious moments with HelloFresh. HelloFresh, inspiration delivered. Up next, as the US stumbles, China is taking advantage. How COVID-19 is reshaping the world order. As we start to look at domestic travel, how do we get back in the air safely? And meet the Aussie cruise ship workers stranded at sea with nowhere to go and no end in sight. Project next. Well, we've had some wild weather. Let's find out from Mike what else is in store. Yeah, thank you, Jen. We've had a wild night tonight, but not as bad as last night's ferocious front. But we have a cold front moving through, reaching Melbourne around midnight. There'll be some rain with that. And then tomorrow, around three degrees colder. 16 today's maximum, only 13 tomorrow. OK, some great looking photos that have been sent to Mike's Picks at network10.com.au. And for the past week, skies have been incredible. This wonderful example in Cranbourne from Abbey. And from Chris, his view of Melbourne from Richmond, and that is a big sky vista. So 10 degrees was how we started the day this morning, temperature-wise, 16 degrees the maximum, and that was early this afternoon. Those great rains overnight, there were some good falls. The best around Melbourne, 26 millimetres at Springvale. In the city itself, 16 mils. Outside now, 12 degrees, of course it is dry. The humidity at 48%, and the wind originating from the icy southwest, currently and northerly, blowing at 18 kilometres per hour. Around Melbourne today, and it was a tad on the chilly side, although the sun was out this afternoon, uh, it was grey this morning. Across our state, well, 21 degrees was today's maximum in Malakuta, with temperatures mostly two or three below average. Regarding the rain, the best falls overnight, 40 mils in the Alps. Today, up to five mils in the southwest. And as we know, 
100k winds at Warnburn created all sorts of problems overnight. Uh, the strongest gust, though, was 135 k's up in the Alps. Around Australia, in Sydney, lovely and 25 degrees. Brisbane, 2 degrees cooler. Uh, 15 degrees in Adelaide and Hobart this afternoon, 16. Interstate tomorrow, Adelaide, 15. Hobart, 13 and cloudy. Uh, 19 degrees in Sydney. We, they've got rain tomorrow with heavy rains on Friday. Moving into Victoria, we've got showers increasing as they move in from the west tonight. Small hail is possible in the southwest this evening. The rain band crossing Victoria tonight. Tomorrow, scattered showers in central and eastern Victoria. Hail tomorrow morning is quite likely in the west. Snow showers above 1,100 metres. Swan Hill just 14, Mildura only 15. We'll have a look at the radar. And there it is on the left side of your screen. Tonight's rain band again reaching Melbourne close to midnight tonight, but without those ferocious storm cells of last night. Tomorrow, a strong wind warning for the Gippsland coast. Around Melbourne, rain overnight, and then tomorrow it will be colder than today. Showers in the morning, Frankston 9 to 14, Geelong 7 to 14. And on the bays, we've got winds from the south southwest at 15 knots. So for Melbourne itself, rain tonight. We've got a couple of showers from 8 o'clock, but the actual rain band will be closer to midnight, 5 to 15 mils, and then tomorrow, a cool 8 to 13 degrees. On to Friday, 14, partly cloudy. Showers later in the day, winds will be light, and then it will be a cool and showery sort of weekend. Saturday, 9 to 15, 2 to possibly 4 or 5 millimetres is forecast. Sunday, 10 to 15 with morning showers. And then it's 15, 17, 16, very much unlike last weekend. So that's the weather again, rug up tomorrow, just 8 to 13 degrees. Jen? Thank you, Mike. And that's 10 News First for this Wednesday. I'll have updates through the evening. The project is coming up next, but for now from the team, good night. Tonight, as the US stumbles, China's taking advantage. How COVID-19 is reshaping the world order. As we start to look at domestic travel, how do we get back in the air safely? Meet the Aussie.